Pinnacle Fighting Championship is back in Florida, coming to you live tonight from vibrant downtown Miami. It's BKFC 22, and we will open with three preliminary bouts. Then at the top of the hour, our main card will begin live on the Bare Knuckle TV app, which you can download at BKFC.com. On the main card, it's Britton Hart versus Pearl Gonzalez in the women's 125-pound division. And we will conclude this loaded card with two title fights. Champion Luis Palomino versus former bantamweight champion Dak Nguyen for the BKFC lightweight title. And cruiserweight champion Hector Lombard versus Lorenzo Hunt for the inaugural BKFC light heavyweight belt. Hey everyone, with Chris Lights Out Lytle, I'm Sean Wheelock. Chris, both Hector Lombard and Lorenzo Hunt have established themselves as truly amongst the elite in BKFC. They've also established a really ferocious rivalry. Absolutely. I mean, these two guys clearly don't like each other. Everybody knows you watch any of the things that have been going on, fist fights, breaking tables. There's a lot of animosity between these guys. You know, sometimes you have to manufacture animosity, hey, not right, the case here. Uh, especially with Hector Lombard, you can just tell he did, truly does not like Lorenzo Hunt. Now, Lorenzo Hunt, maybe there's other stuff, maybe he's trying to hype it up, but even if he is, he does not like Lombard. I mean, these two guys do not like each other. It's very evident. Look what happens here. You know, he's going to try and really break his belt. I mean, he, there's just no respect for these guys. They just don't like each other, and you got to like that when that is the main event. Chris, what is odd is that both fighters refer to each other as a bully. <laughs> both said essentially, I am going to bully the bully in this fight. Yeah, that is the game plan. They both want to go out there. They both have different ways. They go about getting their knockouts, but they're definitely going to try and get them. The Bare Knuckle TV app is the only way to watch our events live worldwide. It costs just $4.99 per month. And of course, it's how you watch our main card tonight, which begins at the top of the hour. It is truly the best deal in combat sports. It's available on all smartphones and on most streaming devices. The Bare Knuckle TV app, download it now at bkfc.com. We will open our worldwide free view. First of three prelims, this in the bantamweight division. You see the numbers, they're presented by Karma Coin, Tyler Randall versus Darwin Bonilla. Uh, in here you can look at the tail of the tape, Sean. Not a lot of difference between these guys. A few inch reach, not that big of a difference. Sometimes you really look at different attributes they have that can out have a, a, a decide the outcome of the fight. Not the case here. It's just it's gonna, who's going to go out there and do their game plan better. Darwin Bonilla set to make his BKFC debut. This year, he attended four separate bare knuckle fighting championship open tryouts, traveling from his home in Greeley, Colorado, to the states of Alabama, Texas, Nebraska, and New Mexico. Bonilla, no pro or ami fights in his career. He did start boxing at the age of 16, but Chris, he told us, his focus has always been on training. He said, well, I've never had an official fight pro or ami. I continue to train, and I have sparred high-level opponents since I was 16 years old. And the thing here, Sean, is this is exactly what we want. We want a guy who really wants to be here this bad to come to four tryouts, spent a lot of money, a lot of time, energy, effort just to get out here. This guy definitely has the will. I can't wait to see if he has the ability to fight. Darwin Bonilla kept telling us, quote, unquote, chop down the tree in our fighter meeting against Tyler Randall. He said, Randall is going to come inside, look to clinch. I'm going to keep throwing to the body. He said, body shots will win me this fight on the inside. Absolutely, he wants to establish his jab as soon as possible. And the thing I really like where he said he wants to make this his masterpiece of boxing. Bonilla said, well, Randall wants to come to the inside and he will throw to the body when that occurs. Ideally, he wants to stay long, throw the jab, keep circling, hit and move. He feels like he's the more technical fighter. That's his key. He wants to go out there, be more technical, and win the fight that way. Huge opportunity for 28-year-old BKFC trialist Darwin Bonilla. Sean, I just can't get over the fact he came to four different tryouts, bought plane tickets, flew, took off work. And that cost him a lot of money. This guy is dedicated to this cause, and I love it. We're going to give him a chance. That's fantastic. Bonilla said, I have very fast hands, very fast feet. I'm going to throw a lot of combinations and a lot of different combinations. You will see the creativity in my hands. Yeah. He definitely wants to start off 
feel his opponent out, and then see where he can go from there. This is the BKFC debut for Tyler Randall. Is that one pro MMA bout? 15 and one is an Ami in MMA. Randall wrestled for a very good NCAA Division III program at Cortland State College in New York. Randall said in bare knuckle, I want to be very elusive and I want to be a showman. I will feed off of the energy of the crowd. I'm going to take chances to produce something special. Absolutely. I, I thought something he said was very wise. He was talking about when he trains, he's more technical with no gloves. People don't really understand that, but you have to be more technical. He understands that. He was very intelligent when we talked to him, a very cerebral fighter. Randall said, I'm going to use his term, relaxed aggression. He explained, that means I'm going to be calm, but I'm still going to be pushing the pace of this fight. And the way he wants to do that, Sean, is through his footwork, through his head movement. He feels like these are huge assets to him. To get us started, BKFC 22, we send it to Jeff Houston. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome to the magnificent James L. Knight Center here in the downtown 305 Miami, Florida. And welcome to BKFC 22. We begin our free view portion of tonight's fights with five two-minute rounds in the bantamweight division presented to you by Karma Coid. Introducing you first, fighting out of the red corner. Tonight, he wears black and gray. He stands five feet, five inches tall. His official weight, 125 and one half pounds. Tonight, he makes his bare knuckle debut. Fighting out of Greeley, Colorado, here is Darwin the Problem Boni. And across the ring, his opponent fighting out of the blue corner. Tonight, he wears black trimmed with silver. He stands five feet, six inches tall. His official weight, 129.6 pounds. Tonight, he also makes his bare knuckle debut. Fighting out of Hoosick Falls, New York. Here is Tyler Randall. And our referee in charge of the action, Chris Young. This and all bouts tonight are scheduled for five two-minute rounds and are scored by three judges assigned by the Florida Athletic Commission on the 10-point must system. Call to toe the line from referee Chris Young. Both fighters up to scratch, standing three feet apart. The bell in round number one. Black and white trunks for Tyler Randall, black and silver trunks for Darwin Bonilla. Jab from Randall. You see the low stance, Chris, from Randall, belying his wrestling background at Division III Cortland State College. You know, one thing I really found interesting, he said he feels like he fights best when he's happy, and he seems like he's in really good spirits, and he just does betting when he's happy. Bonilla ducking under that lead left hook. Simultaneous check left hooks, both landing. Randall coming forward. Bonilla keeping the space he wants. Rear right uppercut just misses the mark from Randall. Randall overhand right. Swing and a miss right back from Bonilla. Bonilla was really big on trying to establish that jab. He really hasn't been able to get it off too much yet. There's the jab from Randall. Straight one two from Bonilla. Almost the lead left bolo punch from Randall showing the creativity. 55 seconds remaining, round number one. See the continual ducking, the level changes from Randall. Bonilla moving backwards, holding that long range. Two swings, two misses from Darwin Bonilla. Big swing and a miss with the left hand from Tyler Randall. Stiff jab lands from Randall. All it takes is one, one punch in this sport, especially even a jab can knock you down. We're coming forward again. Jack left hook and that lands. There's the right hand. Duck under again from Bonilla. Showing fairly elusive slick defense. So we're gonna miss on the overhand right from Darwin Bonilla. 
Bonilla's, jab, jab. Bonilla's really having a problem with that distance right now. He's winging punches right now. He's not able to get inside with that jab like he wants to. Final seconds, round number one. Our first of three preliminary bouts on our one-hour preview worldwide. BKFC 22, we have the round number two. And right at the end of that round, I feel like Randall was really starting to figure out that distance here and that timing. Bonilla seems a little out of out of sync right now. He's really wanting to land that jab, but he's not able to do it. So it's his distance off. He's throwing wild right hooks and left hooks. He's just not able to get in that range where he can hit his opponent. Okay, and here is right at the end we were talking about. Overhand right, lands flush. Randall's really starting to figure out that distance. I am impressed with Darwin Bonilla. He's Head movement was good. He was able to take a good punch. Just a nice, quick little left hand. He saw his opponent had his hands out there. He just hit him with a quick shot. It wasn't necessarily a power shot, but he just letting him know it's there. First up to scratch is Tyler Randall. And Randall just sprinted it up there. He's ready to go. Sporting touch of hands. Referee Christopher Young waiting for the ring to be cleared off of the apron. Round number two. Medium forward pressure from Tyler Randall. There's the jab. And two right back from Bonilla. I like the feints right now by Ray. He's, he's really trying to freeze his opponent. Check left hook from Randall off the mark. And Bonilla does have good head movement. He, he is fairly elusive. You can tell that just comes from round after round after round of spar. Now it's Bonilla Close coming forward. Head. Close your fist. <laughs> But he again timing the duck under. He's done that well off of that lead left hook of Randall thus far in this fight. See, what I'd like to see Roland do is go that body. It's very difficult to move the body like you can the head. But he on the duck under again. Simultaneous left hands. Randall again closing distance. Look at those jabs seem to hurt. Randall told us if I'm having fun, if I'm smiling, I'm winning this fight. Not quite a smile on Randall's face, but he continues to come forward. Right to the body, 60 seconds remaining, round number two. Stiff jab from Tyler Randall. Randall needs to not back straight up there. He went all the way across the ring circle when he moves. Bonilla really timing well that lead check left hook of Randall. Right hand lands on the shoulders. Bonilla through now into the entry. Ty Plum right back out. But then once again showing good head movement. He needs to fire right back after that head movement. He's avoiding punches, doing the hard part. Yeah, just like that, throwing a punch. Darwin Bonilla proving a relatively elusive target thus far in this fight. There's a stiff jab. They're not getting through from Tyler Randall. Randall almost sprinting into the pocket. Bonilla backing off. Bonilla kind of looked like he, he hurt his eye a little bit. He kind of patted at it. So Randall saw a weakness in the Ten seconds. Ten seconds. Ten right hand and wow. that drops Tyler Randall. Three, Beautifully timed four, by Darwin Bonilla. Five, I know. Six, seven, eight. Definitely just a flash knockdown. Fighters cannot be saved by the bell right. in any round under this BKFC rule set. That's why you heard the bell ring. Ref referee Christopher Young continuing to count. Darwin Bonilla just had himself a 10-8 round, Chris. Yeah, they're very interesting because I felt like he was losing that round up to that last second. Just counter with a look, didn't even really ooh, hit him right in the neck, really. Just caught him off balance. Wasn't even a, a, a shot that I think hurt Randall. All just hit him in a funny spot. Look, knocked him off balance. But good enough to score you the knockdown. As long as the punch is what knocks you down, they have to count the knockdown. Doesn't matter. If it, if it hurt you or not, just matters if you if any part of your body besides holding your feet hit the ground. And that was a legal punch on the neck. Set for round number three. Time called by referee Christopher Young. Must Dr. Be so. Don Muzi in the corner of Darwin Bonilla. Must be a, a bad cut he has. All right. Must not be that bad because he's letting the fight go home. Mouse under the left Ten eye of Bonilla has popped. Okay. That was the reason Ten for the entry to Dr. Muzi. Dr. Dr. Muzi's exit, round number three. And you can imagine Randall's going to be throwing some right hands because that eye of Bonilla is really swelling up. See the bounce in the step of Tyler Randall. 
It's largely dictated the tempo of this fight, yet dropped in the closing seconds on the counter right hand of Bonilla in round number two. Overhand right, that was well blocked from Bonilla. Like I said, he's going to continue to throw that, I imagine, with that, that ice swollen up. Bonilla looking to counter, couldn't time it off those big Randall swings. Randall again coming forward into the mid range, off the jab. That eye is starting to look like a mess over there. Those three things like that. He's really going to have to hold up that left hand is Bonilla. Bonilla pulling back that right hand. Started to throw the two, pulled it right back. 70 seconds remaining round number three. Very interesting bout between these two BKFC debuters. Randall pulling back that right hand. Stiff jab again from Tyler Randall. Right hand's on the entry, counter right hand from Randall. Randall's always doing a good job of keeping his back right in the center where he wants it. He wants to make sure he's always pushing his opponent backwards against ropes and not him but pushing back against ropes. Bonilla with that mouse pop under his left eye. Definitely keeping a higher, tighter striking guard here in round three than we oh, saw from him up. in rounds Pick one and up. two. Bonilla just wiped the blood on his face, looked at the blood on his hand, he fights on. You can tell that, that blood's really bothering him. That's what happens sometimes when you got somebody in their debut, they're not used to that. That's where the experience comes into play. Short left hand lands from Randall as Bonilla came forward. Closing stages round number three. 10 seconds, Jimmy, 10 seconds. Overhand right. Randall just missed the return. Randall continues to come forward. On the feint. Turn. Next stop, round four. I'm really impressed with these guys. I know it's their debut, but they are doing a lot of high-level things. The feints, they, I mean, those are things we're not seeing with a lot of our entry guys, but these guys look phenomenal tonight. Chris, we're, of course, not privy to the three floor to judge the scorecards, but very possibly it's even. 10-9 Randall, 10-8 Bonilla, 10-9 Randall. Yeah, I mean, you'd have to think so. And by that, that, that knockdown, you have to say all three rounds, we're probably going to be going to Tyler Randall, but that knockdown changes a lot of things. So quite possibly 28-28, heading into round number four. Reminder, coming up at the top of the hour, our main card begins. You can watch it on the Bare Knuckle TV app. Download it now, pkfc.com. Now, right, right now, Darwin Benin, he's really got to adjust right now. He can't count on that knockdown. Uh, to, to carry him through, he's got to figure out a way to protect that eye and get in there and do some more damage, land some big punches to Tyler Randall. Call of seconds out. Again, it's Tyler Randall first up to scratch. Knuckle up! Muted start. Bonilla. Randall wasn't sure if that was a jab or he was about to touch the glove. It was somewhere in between. I do like what Bonilla does sometimes. He he just cocks back that right hand and waits for his opponent's little punch and then he counters over the top. That's what led to his knockdown. Randall's had a lot of success, Chris, with that lead jab when he's thrown the lead left hook. Not so much. Bonilla's timed it well on the duck unders. There's the jab and that lands. Overhand right just misses from Randall. I think it really starts to throw Bonilla off when one side of your face oh, yeah. there's a knockdown. On the counter and down goes Darwin Three, Bonilla for the first four, time in this fight. Five, and that eye six, is really swollen. I don't know seven, if you can we'll see continue. anything coming out. Eight, yeah. all right. Look, look. One knockdown apiece. Jab again from Randall, overhand right, misses the mark. This is on the rear right upper guard. Counter right hand from Darwin Bonilla back to the center circle. Randall's really head hunting right now. I'd like to see him go with the body. I think he can stop the fight like that. And overhand right, blocked by Randall. Watch your fingers. The free Chris Young telling Bonilla, watch your fingers. You cannot extend with the open fingers. Right hand misses from Bonilla. And pulling back that check left hook. Bonilla with the one, two. 35 seconds remaining round four. Both fighters getting a really good account of themselves in this, their respective BKFC debuts. The fighters throwing the landing, the jab. Left hand lands. And even though you can tell the blood is really bothering Bonnie, every time he gets hit, he fires right back. The fighters continue to move. See the TikTok movement from Randall. 
to the center circle again. Shuffling of the feet from Bonilla. We move to the fifth and funnel out. Like I said, I have been very impressed with Darwin Bonilla. Every time he's, he's in trouble, he's getting hit with a good punch, he's firing right back. That's exactly what you want to see. You don't want to see him shelling up, and it's not happening. He's firing right back. One more breath. He got a new cut. Right there, just a well-timed jab. You see, what made that so powerful, Darwin was throwing his own punch, coming straight forward. So it was his weight as well as Tyler Randall's weight. So those two add together, led to the knockdown. If you're new to bare knuckle, you're seeing this fight. But those of you who've been with us since the beginning already know, knockdowns at BKFC can come from some unusual places and some unusual punches. I'm really impressed with Darwin Bonilla, the way he's fighting right now, because his face is turning into a mess. You look over here at Tyler Randall, this looks like he has a scratch on him. We talked about the score, Sean. You're going to have to think right now, Tyler Randall's up by two. There's going to have to be a knockdown or something for Darwin Bonilla to win this fight. You have to think. I mean, we're not the judges here, but... Check it out! Listen, gentlemen, listen. To the fifth and final punch, round. I'm going to call time to Dr. Look at this cut, okay? So I see that cut, I'm going to call time. All right? I'm going to call time, Dr. Look at you. Ready? Let's knuckle up. So Christopher Young time. saying there's the Dr. bell, Dr. calls cut. time. What's your corner, champ? We're now sending Darwin Bonilla back to Dr. Don Muzi. Woo! Hey, B. And she was the left eye. He's letting him go. Fight. Okay, gentlemen, total line. Dr. Don Muzi, a fight right, doctor's yeah, fight control, doctor. Control. Truly Slip. understands combat sports and combat sports medicine. Round five underway. Slip. That's a slip. I got you, baby. I got you, I got you. correctly by Chris Young. Right back to it. Yeah, probably warning for those fingers again. Bonilla trying to land that overhand right. You see that very tight striking guard now of Bonilla. Much tighter than he was using in rounds one and two. It's an acknowledgement of that deep cut under his left eye. And, and the swelling right there, very difficult to see. Watch your fingers. Dan Young telling Bonilla, watch your fingers. You cannot extend under this BKFC rule set with fingers straight out towards your opponent. Bonilla does such a good job of head movement after the punch. I, I do like these feints right now thrown by Randall. That really gets his opponent to, to react. Naked overhand right from Randall without the jab set up, and it landed. Now the jab. Once again, I think that's a function of that, that eye being so swollen. At the final minute of this bantamweight fight, Tyler Randall versus Darwin Bonilla. One knockdown apiece. See the spear of blood on the face of Bonilla. We got a pace, we got a pace. Naked right hand by Bonilla doesn't land. And I like Bonilla right now. I think he has that sense of urgency. He knows he has to create something. So he's coming forward, he's taking chances. 30 seconds remaining, fifth and final round. Nothing on that jab from Bonilla. There's okay. a body. Counter on the left hand from Tyler Randall. That backs Bonilla off his striking line. Watch your fingers. Now 15 seconds remaining Ten seconds in this fight. Ten both fighters looking for one more significant punch to land. Randall coming forward, closing distance. Huh. There is the bell, the end of the fight. Wow, very impressive, both these guys in this fight. Tyler Randall, Darwin Bonilla going the distance. And again, not just a respected BKFC debut for both fighters. Randall, just his second pro combat sports bout, entered as a veteran of one pro MMA fight. Bonilla at age 28, coming through the open tryouts to get four total this year for BKFC. He never had an Amy fight in any combat sport, never a pro fight in any combat sport. Some this evening, both fighters showing very well of themselves. I mean, it just shows you don't always need to have fights because he has been in the gym and he has been doing the work, and it was very evident right there because you don't get those kind of skills where you can avoid punches and fire back without being in there doing round after round after round. You can tell he's done that. Hey, 
I mean, just look at the difference on these two guys' face right now. Tyler Randall doesn't look like he's even really been in the fight, and Darwin's face is a mess right now. And you fucking performed. I really did awesome. awesome. You did awesome, bro. Three if judges' scorecards being tallied again. They are assigned by the Florida this Athletic this Commission. This fucking thing. John Wooden was the last time the first fight of the night went the distance for us. It's been a while, I think. Usually we don't get out of round number one <laughs> in our opening prelim. Exactly. Perfect. You're only gonna go up here. So Bonilla knocking down Randall in round number two. Randall knocking down Bonilla in round number four. You and I were speculating quite possibly 28-28 heading into the fourth round. Red corner, blue corner. Red corner, blue corner. Blue we corner. send it to Jeff Houston. Red corner, blue corner. Ladies and gentlemen, after completing the scheduled five rounds, here are the score totals from our judges at ringside. All three judges scored the fight 48-45 in favor of your winner by unanimous decision, Tyler Randall. Sean, fantastic fight for Tyler Randall, who looked phenomenal out there, stayed composed the entire time, doesn't look like he even got hit. Looked fantastic out there. I really look forward to watching the fight for you. Not a score you see that often in a fine round fight, in bare knuckle or in MMA, 48-45, and that's because one knockdown apiece. Tyler Randall, Darwin Bonilla, both throwing, both having their moments. The winner, by way of unanimous decision, Tyler Randall defeats Darwin Bonilla. The Bare Knuckle TV app gives you access to live BKFC events in the full Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship archives, as well as two additional fight promotions, such as Toe the Line and Jorge Masvidal's Game Red FC Bare Knuckle MMA. Plus, you'll get fighter interviews behind-the-scenes content, the latest news, original programming, and more. And it's how you can watch our main card tonight, which begins at the top of the hour, all for just $4.99 per month. It is the best deal in all of combat sports, and it's available on all smartphones and on most streaming devices. The Bare Knuckle TV app. Download it now at BKFC.com. Lightweight division, Peter Peraza versus Manny Morera. Our tale of the tape is presented by Tiger Life Energy, the cleaner energy drink. And as you can see here, Morera has a huge reach advantage as well as a height advantage, which is going to be good because Pereira is going to be coming right after him. He's going to have to get inside if he went to land those big punches. So Morera is going to have to keep him on the outside, land those jabs, be elusive, move, keep his opponent at bay. On Tuesday of this week, Manny Marrero was working his construction job at home in Wyoming. He received a message asking him if he would fight at BKFC 22. He asked for time off work. His boss said no, he quit his job. He drove north to Montana to complete his medicals, drove south to Colorado for his flight cross country to Miami. He arrived on Wednesday morning with only his girlfriend, Martha Stalker, no corner. Hearing this, UFC featherweight Charles Rosa, who said that is a real fighter. I am going to be in the corner of Manny Morera tonight. And so, you know, we talked about the last fight. You know, Darwin going to four different tryouts. This is an even more amazing story. He quits his job and, and takes a fight, drives seven hours to Denver, just finds out he has a possibility. This is his dream. Uh, I'm so happy for this guy. I hope he does both. I know he said he does want to get a very fast start. He's got a quick jab, he's accurate, he feels like he's very technical. He really thinks he's gonna have good cardio even though he didn't get time to prepare for this fight. Peter Peraza from here in Miami, Florida, making his pro combat sports debut. Peraza said as a fighter, I have the ability to adapt very well. I am a very fluid fighter. That's very important. You know, you can have a good game plan and you can 
bar a lot, but then you go out there and then somebody's doing something a little bit different. It's all about adapting. You have to be able to figure that out on the fly. He said he does that well. He also said he loves the clinch, and that's going to be important for him going against a, a taller gentleman like this. He's going to have to work his way on the inside and wear his opponent out, push him around. Barraza said, I think Forer is going to try to outbox me, stay long. I need to make him engage, but do so in a smart, not a reckless fashion. Yeah. One thing he said, he understands this is not boxing. He's not going to try and make it a boxing match. He's going to try and make this a fight. He did a lot of MMA sparring for this, so he could really work on that that different accuracy and that different way to block punches. Back we go to Jeff Houston. Ladies and gentlemen, we are now set for the next fight of the night. Scheduled for five two-minute rounds in the lightweight division. Presented to you by Tiger Life Energy, the cleaner energy drink. Introducing you first, fighting out of the red corner. Tonight, he wears black and red. He stands at even six feet tall. His official weight, 150.8 pounds. He holds a bare knuckle record of one victory opposite a single defeat. Fighting out of Sheridan, Wyoming. Here is Manny Anarchy Moreira. And across the ring, his opponent fighting out of the blue corner. Tonight, he wears white and gold. He stands five feet, seven inches tall. His official weight, 153.7 pounds. Tonight, he makes his bare knuckle debut. Fighting out of Miami, Florida. Here is D2G. And our referee in charge of the action, Big Dan Mergliana. Manny Marrera has had right, two bare line. knuckle bouts, but this is his BKFC oh, debut, yeah. as it is for Peter Good. Peraza. Come on. All right. All right. Go to the line. You ready? You ready? Buckle up. Round number one white trucks for Peter Peraza, black trucks for Manny Marrera. Like you said, John, having two fights can be the difference sometimes, having a little bit of experience, understanding the distance. It takes people a few minutes to figure that out sometimes. Overhand right, there's the entry into the clinch. Half tie plunk snatched by Peraza. Marrera right back out. Left overhand right lands big for Peraza. Peraza to the inside. Marrera looking to counter. Half tie right, right, plunk right, again. Right, right. Right. Ball for Don't break from referee Dan Mogliotta. Don't pull on his head with two hands, right? Mogliotta telling Peraza, you cannot pull on your opponent's head with two hands. Peraza looks very relaxed out there. Very impressed with him so far. They're trying to work off the jab. That free right hand for Peraza. Coming to the inside again. Big uppercuts from the half tie plug. Those are legal. Those are effective. Switching grips, going right back. Peraza to the inside, overhand right. Marrera covering up, looking to counter. One-way traffic at the moment for Peter Peraza. More big shots. Stunning shots now to the body, and down goes Manny Marrera. And it was the, when he finally hit him to the body Five, that I think did the work, man. Six, seven, great eight, combinations eight, being eight, thrown eight. there by Peraza. Go forward. All right, let's go. Box, buckle up. Peraza stepping in, he can see the finish line now, trying to reach it here, closing stages round number one. And this is the time right now, Marrero might want to try and grab, really grab his opponent right now, get that clinch himself. He's just covering up, but he's taking a beating doing it. That's a really smart clinch by Peraza, you see, switching hands that are cupping the neck on that single collar tie, half tie plum of Marrero. Marrero trying to reset off the jab again to the inside. Huge first round for Peter Peraza. Right. Nice we will go to round two. Here's the thing, Sean. I mean, Peraza definitely had a dominant round right there, but he spent a lot of energy. He's going to have to be in great shape if he wants to even come anywhere near continuing to fight like that. He's going to have to slow it down. You know, you think Moreira might not have the advantage of only taking this on short notice, but wow. Boston Strong, Charles Rosa in the corner of Manny Moreira. I mean, not only did he prove 
is a fighter by the way he took this fight. He proved he's a fighter right there. The way he took that, he shelled up, he defended himself, and he's still here for the fight. Might be a great strategy, to be honest with you, Sean. If he can wear his opponent out after that devastating first round, you never know. Maybe sometimes if he wears the opponent out, he, oh, here we go. Okay, seconds out. Seconds out. And it seems Let's like go. to me when Point he finally out. changed it up a lot right here, when he finally goes to body, that's the punch that did it right back. there. Thank you. All right, total line, Joe, over here, sir. It was really a knockdown of volume and attention for Peter up. Peraza, round number two. Where has got to start working that jab? We talked about he's got a huge reach advantage. He got to utilize that if he wants to win this fight. He has not been offensive at all right now. There's the jab from Peraza. There's the jab from Herrera. Got a right hand right back from Peraza. Morera with the diversion, throwing his right hand up and throwing the jab. Tentative check left hook from Morera. Morera trying to come forward here early stages round two. See that first round is all that energy out there. That, that's gone right now. This is when the fight really starts. Slight walk down pressure from Morera. Largely absent from Manny Morera in round number one. Big right hand and down goes Barrera for the second time in this fight. Four. Well timed Five. right there for Perez. He just Six. waited for the right time. He went and let his opponent go up. Power right move. hand right over the top. Right. Let's go, knuckle up. Beautifully timed right hand by Peter Peraza. I mean, it caught his opponent, but it didn't really hurt him, I don't think. It looked like a flash lock down Barrera seems fine. Barrera again coming forward. Off the canvas for the second time in this bout. 35 seconds remaining round two. Peraza sitting back, continuing to load up that right hand. Herrera still trying to work his way into this fight. Overhand right, just off the mark from Peter Peraza. On the entry for Peraza. Looking to snatch the half tie plum again. Right, no strikes, no strikes. Good job, turn around, ready? Muckle up. Right back to it, orders Dan Mergliata. On the left, counter left hand right back for Manny Morera. Two strong rounds for Peter Peraza. A knockdown in round number one, a knockdown again recorded by Peraza in round number two. We move to round three. Not only is he getting knockdowns, I was really impressed with Peraza's intelligence that round. He didn't take the round off, but he changed the pace. He slowed it down to a pace he can still win at, but he's not gonna gas Give himself out. We talked Give about that. If he just keeps going at that rate, he is gonna gas himself out. He slowed it down. A lot of it, it, it looks like he has a lot of experience, even though he really does it right now. Great advice being given by Will. Coach right and the cut man. One coach and the cut man. That's the perfectly laid punch right there. Just hit him all. We're trying to figure it out. Do a punch okay, and he comes right out, over gentlemen. the seconds top of Peraza. Grab that coach, clean coach. right hand. Thank you, sir. Round number three. All right, Peter Peraza is said, line. I'm going to keep yeah. moving. Up. Slightly turn up the aggression with every progressive round, but I do not want to overextend myself and get caught or gas out. Peraza has done exactly that extremely well through the opening two rounds of this fight. We're off the jab. Peraza coming forward. And with the rear right hand for Morera. Morera's fainting like he's going to throw that up a bit. He's going to have to land a big punch if he wants to change the pace of his fight. Stiff jab from Morera. Morera listed at six foot to Peraza's 5'7. There's the jab from Morera from range. Entry right back from Peraza to the inside. Counter right hand and the right hand right back from Peter Peraza. Get that hip. Get that hip. 
Due to the, 50 seconds to go round three. Due to the height difference right there, Peraza really has to explode in every time he wants to land the punch. Really push off that back foot. He's doing a good job here. Smear of blood under Peraza's right eye. Herrera continuing to come forward. Herrera just throwing that one, two. He's going to have to hit him with a different power shot, I think. Maybe the hook, uppercut. He's going to have to throw a three after that, two. Peraza looking to counter off the right hand. Herrera, you see, looking to level change. There is that Peraza jab. Final seconds, round number three. Back to the center circle. The jab of Marrera, the right hand misses the mark, the bell, and we will go for round four. So Marrera's doing a, a better job right now. He's getting position, but he's going to have to follow that up with, with more punches. He's just throwing the jab on the one-two. He's going to have to really open it up if he's going to want to change the pace of this fight because Peraza's Bar doing a very good job right now, just fighting when he wants to. It's like a couple of those jabs from where it has opened a few small cuts on Perez. Over his right eye. All right, total line. Ready? Buckle up. Peter Peraza versus Manny Marrera in the lightweight division, round number four. Again, Peraza knocking down Marrera in round number one and again in round number two. Manny Marrera is still very much in this fight. But presumably 10-8, 10-8 to Peraza. Difficult to see it any other way. Peraza, when he, when he uh, Herrera, when he's throwing those punches right now, throwing those jabs, he's really not putting a lot on him. He's just kind of throwing them out there. I'd like to see him step in a little more, make those, make those dangerous punches. Chris, even if the three Florida judges in the majority are unanimously go 10-9 Marrera in round number three, it very well may have been Peraza's 10-9 round. Marrera still needs to turn up the pressure to win this fight. The two knockdowns make that 100% true, John. 65 seconds remaining, round number four. Herrera cutting distance. Can you should see the level change. Left hand well blocked from Peter Peraza. Peraza continuing the move. That was clever on the right hand getting through from Peraza. Now the left hand. Straight jab right back from Herrera again the jab. Herrera trying to get his jab going. Right hand not getting through the guard of Peraza. 35 seconds to go round four. Peraza doing a good job of just pairing these punches. Every time something's thrown at him, he sees it coming, keeps his hands nice and tight, makes sure his face and just bats up to the punch right out of the way. See the slap away from Marrera, perhaps growing in confidence, slapping away the lead hand of Peraza. Yeah, Marrera really starting to see the punches coming now, too. They're very comfortable out there, both guys. Well, seconds round number four. Marrero willing his way back into this fight. Right. And we will move to the fifth and final round. Very close competitive round right there, John. And like you said, even if he has won these last two rounds, we're talking about Marrero. If he's won both of them, he's still going to be down by two. He's going to have to get a knockdown just a time. He's really going to have to step up the pressure. Again, at the top of the hour, our main card will begin. You can watch it on the Bare Knuckle TV app. If you have not done so, download it right now, bkfc.com. And right here you see what we're talking about, oh, yeah. that jab. Some guys are great fighters in that. Finding a home for it. It was very comfortable out there. Both guys are hands yeah, in their eyes are exactly everything where they want it to be. Everything you got, push them. In good position, quit. they're sitting in there. Quit. Yeah, I throw a punch right the block. Right. Well. I want very you to move around like you're getting ready to do something. But I want you to bluff them. Maximum of one round, round, two minutes round, remaining in this lightweight fight. Let's go. 
Right, total Andy line, Marrero ready? must know Chris. Buckle up. He needs a knockout, or if not, multiple knockdowns here in the fifth and final round to win this fight. Again, we're not privy to the three Florida judges scorecards. No open scoring in Florida as we have in Kansas. But again, Peraza knocking down Marrero in round number one and again in round number two. Raza moving backwards as Morera looks to come forward from distance. Naked right hand. That was clever from Manny Morera. Morera starting to open up to the body. That's what you need to do right now. Laying some body shots right there. That should open the head up. Peraza was so effective in rounds one and two, snatching that half tie plum, throwing from the inside. That's largely been absent for Peraza since round three. A lot of that has to do with Morera starting to establish his straight punches, his jab from range. And with Morera being so much higher, I'd like to see him throw a couple of jabs and then that uppercut against Peraza. And he's kind of fainting sometimes and just throwing it when he doesn't really need to. But... To the inside now comes right, Peter Peraza, right, exactly, right, exactly where he wants to be, an active clinch. The reason for the break from Dan Mogliata. 40 seconds remaining, fifth and final round. Morera's really got to turn the pace right now. He's got to get a knockdown if he wants to tie this up or have a chance to tie it up. We don't know what the scorecards say, but if not, we know he has no chance. So he's circling for Peraza, staying on the outside. Jab for Morera. Overhand right in the left hand. That was a clever combination from Peraza and it landed. Peraza slight cut now over his right brow. Stretch drive of this fight. There's the jab, the entry by Peraza on the right hand. Counter right hand by Marrero. Peraza throwing back. Right. The bell. The end of a very entertaining fight. So I'm very impressed with Marrero's ability to take oh. this fight on just a few days' notice and come out here and put on a performance like that. And, and that being said, Peraza looked Maybe very go good go himself. Go he looked like go a go veteran go out there. He looked like he could throw the pace many, at many times early on the fight. Didn't gas right, himself good. out. Well, a Rocky-esque story for Manny Marrera. Again, quitting his job on Tuesday. Driving overnight Tuesday and the Wednesday from his home in Sheridan, Wyoming to Denver International Airport. Then flying cross country to make this fight. But remember, in Rocky, it was Rocky Balboa losing the unanimous decision. <laughs> Actually, a split decision to Apollo Creed. I think we might be seeing a unanimous decision win for Peter Peraza. But again, we're just speculating. Although, Peraza, strong rounds one and two, recording a knockdown of both rounds. Absolutely, looked phenomenal out there. Did exactly what he needed to the first few rounds. I'm not sure if he got a little tired at the at the end, or Morera really just kind of figured out the pacing and the distance and everything. But uh, a great fight, nevertheless. Yeah. I mean, Sean, I know we talked about when was the last time we had the first fight go all five rounds. Have we ever had the first two fights go all five rounds? I don't think we have. I think it is unprecedented <laughs> be KFC 22. Ten rounds in our opening two prelims. And again, a reminder, still one prelim to go on our preview. You're watching live online worldwide. And then at the top of the hour, maybe even just a little past, our main card will begin. The only way to watch is on the Bare Knuckle TV app. Most of you have already done so, but if you have not, you can download it now, bkfc.com. We will conclude our main card tonight here at the James L. Knight Center in downtown Miami, Florida with two BKFC world title fights. Here is Jeff Houston. Ladies and gentlemen, after completing the scheduled five rounds, here are the score totals from our judges at ringside. Our judges score the contest 48-45, 48-45, and 49-45 to the winner by unanimous decision, DTG, Peter Peraza! Yeah,
been a very good fight for Peter Bryce. It looked fantastic out there the first few rounds, and then he knew exactly what he had to do to win this fight, and he, he was able to accomplish that. Full credit to both fighters. Peter Prazer really started strong, getting those knockdowns in round one and round number two. Manny Marrera, such a great story, taking this fight, getting the moral victory, trying to will himself back into this fight, but Peraza simply too strong. The winner, by way of unanimous decision, Peter Peraza defeats Manny Marrera. Knuckle Fighting Championship returns live on Thursday night, December 9th, as we're back here in the state of Florida for BKFC Fight Night Tampa at Seminole Hard Rock. In the main event, it's a pair of undefeated fighters in the BKFC 155-pound world title eliminator, Mark Trey Brown versus Bobby Taylor. Plus, you'll see the return of the always exciting Jenny Savage in the BKFC debut of UFC veteran Robbie Peralta. You can watch live right here worldwide on the Bare Knuckle TV app. For more information and to purchase tickets, go online to BKFC.com. BKFC 22 coming to you live tonight from Miami is presented by Tiger Life Energy, the cleaner energy drink. Karma Coin. And by Eight Man Strong. Our final prelim of the night before our main card begins top of the hour live worldwide on the Bare Knuckle TV app in the light heavyweight division. James Rodriguez versus Brian Maxwell. Our tale of the tape is presented by BetOnline.ag. As you can see here from the tale of the tape, Brian Maxwell does have a three-inch reach advantage. When we talk about that, whether that means much in this fight, I think this fight it does because Brian Maxwell was pretty adamant. He's wanting to stay on the outside and land long punches from there. So he's going to have to utilize that three-inch reach advantage here. Brian Maxwell, a veteran of four bare knuckle bouts, three in BKFC, one in total line. He's also fought five times in his pro MMA career, as well as boxing a four round exhibition this past June versus the six time Pro Bowl wide receiver, Chad Ochocinco Johnson. That, of course, was on the undercard of the Floyd Mayweather Jr. Logan Paul card. Maxwell has formed an intense friendship with Chad Ochocinco Johnson. He said they speak almost every day. Maxwell said, I learned from Ochocinco, do not be bothered by outside criticism. To be a top athlete, you have to stay focused. Not only stay focused, but he said one thing, he was like, you can never give up. And then do it, so he really came in and worked on his craft. He's worked on angles, distances. He feel like these are all finally coming together. And we've talked about that, Sean, after about four or five fights, you really start to understand the sport, and he feels he does now. James Rodriguez set to make his BKMC debut. Fought three times in his pro boxing career, twice in his pro MMA career. Rodriguez said in this bout, I want to showcase my boxing. I have to be smart. I have to use my athleticism. I cannot allow Brian Maxwell to suck me into a brawl. Doesn't want a brawl. Very interesting, though. He seemed like this guy would really like brawls. Not only did he have you know, the fights you talked about, but he also had some backyard fights, some brawls on that level right there. This is a little different form, but he wants to utilize his athleticism. Feels like he has good head movement, which is coming there, very high fight IQ. Rodriguez said, I'm focused on making a statement with a huge knockout. If I have to take some chances to do so, I will do it. Here is Jeff Houston. Ladies and gentlemen, we are set for the next fight of the night. Scheduled for five two-minute rounds in the light heavyweight division. Presented to you by BetOnline.ag. Introducing you first, fighting out of the red corner. Tonight, he wears white. He stands an even six feet tall. His official weight, 180.4 pounds. He is a true veteran of the squared circle. Coming in between the ropes for the fifth time. Fighting out of Roanoke, Virginia, here is Brian, Mr. Red Rims, Max 
Swell. And across the ring, his opponent finding out of the blue corner. Tonight, he wears red and white. He stands six feet, one inch tall. His official weight, 179.4 pounds. He holds a combined combat sports record of five fights and makes his bare knuckle debut. Fighting out of Miami. of the action, Dennis Asimenos. Further your line, Brian, further your line. Brian Maxwell said, you ready to fight? You ready to fight? I have to be selective with my punches. Rodriguez told us, I haven't formed a game plan. I'm going to read and react and slowly turn up the pressure on Brian Maxwell. Round number one, red trunks for James Rodriguez, white trunks for Brian Maxwell. Rodriguez really wants to get a statement win, he said. He wants to show everybody in the division he's here to stay. Left hand from Maxwell coming forward off the jab. Right to the body, Maxwell looks the counter. Well, you can just tell Maxwell looks more relaxed than he normally does. Duck under from Brian Maxwell into the clinch. Now the good, clever turn from James Rodriguez. Good bit of referee from Telesasa Menios, letting the fighters punch their way out of that active clinch. Straight right hand on the entry for Rodriguez. Big left hand on the counter from Maxwell after the tie-up. The tie-up again on the level change from Maxwell. And Maxwell is split open good. He's bleeding very badly right now. Active clinch, overhand right, half tie pump snatched by James Rodriguez. Sky hook punches stop, from Brian stop. Maxwell. Oh, he's behind the head, oh, he's behind the head. Go. From referee Telus Asamenios, punches to the back of the head. Big uppercut from the half tie pump from Rodriguez. Maxwell covering up, looking for the duck under okay, again. Stop, stop, nine. Time okay. called by Telus Asamenios. Stay there. Like he was just a nice clean punch. He was landing right on the forehead of Brian Maxwell right there. Medical timeout. The immediate past president of the Association of Ringside Physicians, Dr. Don Muzi, assessing that cut on the forehead of Brian Maxwell. Are you okay to fight? Oh, you're okay to fight. Get a good view of it right there. Knock him up. Time in. Round number one resumes. See the range finder extended by Maxwell. Rodriguez hey. into the clinch. Heavy pressure now from Maxwell on the turn. Go, 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 Big go. shots. And this fight is over. Stopped by Telesasa Menios. That is it. And the win for James Rodriguez in his BKFC debut. Wow. What a debut right there. Came in and looked fantastic. Brian Maxwell, I still felt even in defeat. I think that was one of the best things. Look, he took some hard shots. Didn't waver, continued to fight, but man, just James Rodriguez overwhelming right there. That was a statement win. I think right here, oh, just a nice clean punch. Good right hand. Made Maxwell really tightened up right there. He can see, but it's okay. It's just a lot of blood from the gas. And look, Rodriguez just continues to find a way to land punches. Maxwell almost tried to take him down right there. James Rodriguez said he had to walk that fine line of taking chances to get a statement knockout, but not getting sucked into a brawl. He walked that fine line extremely effectively in his BKFC debut. Absolutely. Look fantastic out there. We're fucking different, man. I'm bringing something serious right here. TKO on that, yeah? Disappointment okay. for Brian Maxwell. An elation for James Rodriguez. You might want to pay any respect for the minute. We go to Jeff Houston. Can I get him up? Ladies and gentlemen, our referee in charge, Telis Asimenos, steps in and calls a stop to the fight at 1 minute 28 seconds into round number one for your winner by TKO, James yeah. Rodriguez. Sean, when we were doing our interviews with James Rodriguez, Gustavo Trujillo came up and pointed to him and he said, future champion right there. 
He might be right, Sean. He looks very good right now. Very difficult to tell in one fight, but he looked fantastic, and I can't wait to see him fight. I don't care who it is, anyway. But look at that gash. Nasty yes, cut right out of the forehead of Brian Maxwell. Unbridled joy from the victor, James Rodriguez. Hard start, Brian Maxwell staying heavy in the clinch. The level changes, but James Rodriguez showing his class, showing his skill. The winner by way of first round TKO, James Rodriguez defeats Brian Maxwell. The Bare Knuckle TV app gives you access to live BKFC events and the full Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship archives, as well as two additional fight promotions, such as Toe the Lawn and Jorge Masvidal's Gamebred FC Bare Knuckle MMA. Plus, you'll get fighter interviews, behind the scenes content, the latest news, original programming, and more. And it's how you can watch our main card tonight, which begins in mere seconds, all for just $4.99 per month. It is truly the best deal in all of combat sports, and it's available on all smartphones and on most streaming devices. The Bare Knuckle TV app, download now at bkfc.com.